When we talk about uh, images, we talk about the nature of images and a field of study called semiotics. So looking at images, there are several basic types of images. There's the volatile, the fixed, and the mental image. And we can unpack that with an understanding that a volatile image is something that uh, changes very easily, is very fluid, like a television picture or a projection. Uh, a fixed image has a tendency to be on something that's more permanent, but even a photograph will eventually fade or um, be destroyed. There's really no such thing as permanence in imagery. And the last type is probably the most ephemeral. It's the mental image. And if you've studied psychology, you know that uh, in terms of memory, our minds basically reconstruct uh, our memories from little tiny pieces. So a mental image, um, whether it's real or whether it's imagined, is sort of a composite. And it's a fabrication of sorts. Now when we think about images, when we look at images, or when we talk about images, we're talking specifically about something called the sign. Now the sign is made up of two parts, the signifier and the signified. The signifier typically is the thing that represents that other thing. In this case, uh, if we're talking about a tree, the word T-R-E-E -E, is the signifier, and the tree, or the idea of treeness, is the signified. So in looking at this image, uh, we see this picture of a tree. And the picture of the tree is then again even another signifier. It doesn't actually represent the tree. Uh, an actual tree is every idea that we have about a tree, but it's also the way that it smells, the way that it tastes, the way that it, the sound of the rustling of the leaves, the way that it looks, um, and the way that it feels to our, to our skin when we touch it. But then again, each of those um, references to the tree passes through something else. Like light is the light that's bounced off of it. The sound is the, are the compression waves of uh, the atmosphere that happen in that area. So our real experience of a tree is not the tree itself, generally. It's all through these sort of filtered experiences. Semiotics, though, and signs in particular, goes off in another direction. If we look at um, this upper left image, we see dollar sign equals smiley face. That's a sentence. And those are, that's all written out with these sort of uh, signifiers. And we understand what it means, like money is happiness, right? Uh, below it, the letters D-O-G spell out dog. And when you hear the word dog, you think of a dog. You probably think of a very specific dog, maybe even your own dog or the dog that you had when you were growing up. Um, and again, that's, uh, the text is representing something else. In the upper right-hand corner, we see a picture by Magritte. And it says underneath it, ceci n'est pas un pipe. And that is that this is not a pipe. Well, what is it? It looks like a pipe. It's an image of a pipe. And again, he's responding to the fact that the image is not the object. And then below that, we see the universal symbol for a dude, like particularly a dude that has to go to the bathroom. So I want to talk about another construct in images that's called the simulacrum. And the simulacrum is a little bit, it's a little bit different. It's much more, it's about like, uh, creating a representation, like a statue can represent the, uh, the hero or the deity that it was created after. A painting can represent the person. But then again, these, um, like in semiotics, like signs, these aren't actually the things. Like the painting could have been painted from a photograph, and the photograph could have been taken of the person when they were alive, and that person could have been dead when the painting was made. Um, the painting doesn't actually isn't actually the person, doesn't actually completely represent the person, but this construction in terms of uh, putting uh, this pigment to the canvas then attempts to describe this person or create uh, a recognizable image of this person. Now, along these lines, if you use something that has meaning, we will assume that you're using the meaning. That is to say that as an artist, if you take and you use a sign, 
that we recognize, we will assume that you're using the universal meaning for that sign and not that you are u using anything else. So in co our conversations with, um, particularly in critique, um, you'll hear us asking, well, did you mean to do this? Is this what you mean by that? Uh, do you realize that this has that particular meaning? So lastly, I want to look again at, um, <clears throat> at a variation on Magritte's image here. And what we see here is something that has actually a little bit more meaning to it. I mean, what is it about this image? What is it about this image that you recognize that makes it different? Well, it's the blue and the red around the edges, right? What does that mean? That means that this image is meant to be viewed in 3D. That there is a certain, that this image was put together in such a way that it has a, a representation um, to the mind yet as a three-dimensional object. Lastly, I want to notice that there is, um, in this case, this same image, this 3D image was taken and then fabricated into an object. It was a needlepoint. And so what we have here is this like sort of reference to a reference to a reference to a reference. And it all comes down into this like sort of craft-like object.